What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and just as we predicted a couple weeks back, Apple has released iOS 15.5 Beta 2 to register developers about two weeks after the initial beta. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got these second betas of iPadOS 15.5, tvOS 15.5, HomePodOS 15.5, watchOS 8.6, and macOS Monterey 12.4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and discussing what's new in the software, along with what to expect next from Apple. All right, so let's start off with the size and build number for this update. So you can see here, the update came in just over 600 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. The size will be pretty large, especially for a second beta, regardless of what version you're coming from, but that is coming from beta one. So let's go ahead and check out the build number, settings general about, 15.5, we can see there it's 19F5057E. So we have an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we should see at least a couple more betas before the final release. And if we go down to the modem firmware all the way down at the bottom, we can see that is unchanged. It still stays at 1.60.00. All right, so now what's new here in beta two? And the first thing is that the Shazam music history now works in beta two. So for whatever reason in beta one, if you guys use the Shazam music recognition in the control center when you have to press on that it shows you the history of all the songs that you use this feature for to you know kind of recognize the song and show you what song is playing well in beta one it didn't show any of your history but now you can see it shows all the history of everything in the past and you didn't lose anything so i was afraid i'd lose all my history but i didn't it all came back here in beta 2. we also have a new glyph icon inside of safari so if we go into safari and tap on the share sheet right here you will see under find on page, we have a new glyph icon right here. And you can see over here on the left, that's what it looked like on iOS 15.4.1. It was just a big magnifying glass. Now it's a small magnifying glass with a little sheet right there, like a website. So much better glyph icon, I think, for the find on page feature. We do also have the new Apple Pay Cash buttons right here. So they request and send from the wallet application, also from the messages application, the Apple Cash application and messages. You're now able to request and send with a press of a button. Now we don't see anything with the iTunes Pass. I tried looking for this. If I go into here, press on the plus, you can see right here, we don't have anything for the iTunes Pass card that we talked about in the previous beta. So I'm waiting to see when that comes out. We may see that with the final build of 15.5 but I'm not seeing anything here in the app store or in the wallet application for that new iTunes pass. We also have quite a few changes in the code, as you can see here, pointed out by Steve Moser on Twitter. So we have changes to the AirTag text. We have this right here for voice shortcuts that says automations will run once your iPhone is unlocked. I actually saw this after updating initially, but it went away after a reboot. So just a lot of really small changes to the verbiage and just some code as well. He did also find that new image for Apple account balance. Now, as far as bugs go, it seems that some people are seeing this annoying pop-up for Game Center when you open up a game. So even if you press on continue, it still shows that the next time you open up a game, which could get pretty annoying. I've not had this myself, but some people are seeing this on Twitter. I'm also continuing to have issues with AirPlay to HomePod. So for whatever reason, it's a lot more buggy on beta versions. I mean, I know that's kind of expected, but still, it's just very annoying. All the skipping around I have, sometimes songs just don't play. It take a long time to go to the next song. There's like a 10 second gap in between songs when I'm AirPlaying to HomePod, which is extremely frustrating. And then one other thing I wanted to touch on, which I didn't really think it was worth mentioning because I thought it was just me, but apparently a lot of people are having this as well. In beta one, for whatever reason, my iPhone would just heat up a lot. No matter what I did, I would restart it and it would just heat up a lot. It would get very hot. But here in beta two, after only having it installed for about an hour, I can already tell a difference in the heat. It's not getting near as hot as it did on beta one. So if you've had issues with heating, especially on the iPhone 13 series, that should be fixed here in beta two. And then as far as the release notes go, you can see here, Apple has not updated the release notes for beta two, and it's been over an hour. So that makes me think either one, there's literally nothing changed in beta two, even worthy of updating the release notes, or Apple is just really behind and there's a lot of things changed in the release notes. But I think it's the former. I don't think there's really much changed in this beta, which means we still have the issue with universal control not working on Mac OS 12.3 and iOS and iPad OS 15.4. So just keep that in mind. Now, as far as performance goes, performance was pretty good in beta one. I didn't really have any complaints. I didn't have any UI bugs or any issues with multitasking or anything like that. 
No complaints. It felt about the same as 15.4.1, so it wasn't really a jump in performance. But we're going to run a benchmark here to see if the scores are any better than beta 1. But so far, after testing it, it feels about the same as beta 1 to me, as expected. So we scored a 1739 on the single core and a 4872 on the multi core. And you can see how that compares to beta 1 right here. I started naming these now since a lot of you guys requested that. But you can see only one point above beta one in the single core and a little bit lower on the multi-core. So again, these don't really tell the whole story, but you should see about the same performance here in beta two. And as far as battery life goes, I would also expect battery life to be a little bit better here in beta two. And the only reason I say that is because the heat issue seems to be fixed. So of course, heat is the biggest you know, enemy of battery life. And that could have been a reason why the battery life may have been a little bit lower in beta one for you. I personally didn't notice a big difference. I said it wasn't as good as 15.4.1, but it wasn't bad. But now since we don't have the heat issue, I could see battery life being a little bit better here in beta two and possibly even being right on par with 15.4.1. And then finally, let's discuss what is next for Apple. So just as I predicted on April 5th, when the first beta came out, I said that Apple would skip a week and then release beta two on the week of the 18th. And that is exactly what happened. But now it's a little bit tougher to predict what Apple's going to do. So we know that the final release of iOS 15.5 is coming out before June 6th which is the Worldwide Developers Conference, Mark Gurman said it's coming around that time. So that gives us possibly the last two weeks of May to see a release for that, the week of the 23rd or the week of the 30th. I think those are the two most likely dates that we'll see the release of iOS 15.5 to the public. And then given the fact that we have an E at the end of the build number, makes me think that we are inching up closer to the final release, the final build, which makes me think we're gonna skip another week. So I could see Apple skipping the week of the 25th and releasing a third beta on the week of the second. And then after skipping another week, we would switch over to a weekly release schedule which means we would get beta four on the week of the ninth and then possibly an RC on the week of the 16th and then a final on the week of the 23rd. Now, if that's not the case, we would see Apple release a beta next week and then a beta four on the week of the second and then a beta five on the week of the ninth and then an RC on the week of the 16th and then the final on the week of the 23rd. So I think we're going to see it on the week of the 23rd just because I don't think Apple's going to release that in going into June. But, you know, it's still way too early to really have any opinion on that or really predict that. That is just my first initial thought. And then also, like I've mentioned before, we could see an iOS 15.4.2, and that could come as early as next week, the week of April 25th. I could see that to fix up more bugs and patch up some of those security vulnerabilities. I could see that coming before 15.5. So be on the lookout for that as well. And then of course, on June 6th is when we'll see iOS 16 beta one, which I know is what a lot of you guys are looking forward to more than anything else. So anyways, there you have it. That is iOS 15. 15.5 beta 2 really not too much changed in this update just minor bug fixes and probably some more changes in the code as well of course this isn't going to be a very big release you know we are going to have some new features but it is a 0.5 update you can't really expect too many new things in a 0.5 update i thought we could see the potential of a new wallpaper in this beta, but unfortunately we didn't see that. So hopefully we see something more in beta three as we get closer and closer to that final release. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for more iOS 15 and iOS 16 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.